Hi, this is Jason, Chief Technical Analyst with Toro Alerts with your weekly market update. Saw a lot of volatility this week with a start to the week to the upside, but over the last uh, couple of days we saw some huge selling pressure in the S&P 500. Uh, SPY is down about 5% in the last two trading days, so a big move to the downside and it looks like so far in uh, the post market uh, Friday afternoon it looks like it's uh, sold off even further so definitely looking fairly bearish for the broader markets uh, we'll be watching this uh, 413.50 level uh, key Fibonacci ex extension level for potential support uh, if we were to break down below that even further then I think that would be a pretty strong signal of uh, a much deeper correction in the, in the cards so we'll have to keep an eye on that going into next week and we're watching the NASDAQ over in the triple Q's uh, similar story, a, a pretty pretty aggressive sell-off over the last couple of days of the NASDAQ. Uh, we we're actually really not looking for any NASDAQ trades. Uh, really once we broke below that Fibonacci uh, level at about 354. And so we've been uh, either short or staying outside of the NASDAQ uh, at, for the time being and that's been uh, looking like the right uh, decision there. Uh, we could see a potential bounce uh, with a possible triple bottom if we uh, bounce off of that at around the 318 level. Otherwise, I'd be looking at a, a possible support around 303, 304 on the triple Qs. And then over, jumping over to the Dow Jones Industrial Averages, uh, we talked about last week getting above some key volume support and that possibly being a, a potential bullish uh, opportunity in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, and we did get above that for a few days, but then towards the end of this week, we had a pretty aggressive sell-off. And now we're clearly below those volume support levels and uh, also sold off after hours going into Friday's close as well. So things are looking a bit bearish over in the industrial averages as well. And then when we take a look at the Dow Jones Transport Indexes, um, relatively it's uh, done a lot better than most sectors, uh, but it did have a pretty big uh, drawdown after a, a move to the upside earlier in the week. And so uh, I think we're probably going to see some continued selling pressure in the transports. And if we do see that uh, break down below the 14.370 level, I think that'd be a pretty strong signal uh, for, some, for even more defensive posturing in the markets. And when we jump over to the relative rotation graph and start taking a look at a variety of different sectors and industry groups to see uh, what's working and what's not, we can see some of the biggest losers were the ARC Innovation Funds. Uh, we saw some huge selling pressure in biotech. Uh, Global Lithium was down, which was a really strong sector up until recently. Um, we've seen um, that really the only two sectors that have done relatively well over the last couple of weeks are Nat Gas and Consumer Staples, but both of those look to be rolling over as well. And so I don't even think those are great uh, necessarily trade setups to get into right at this time. So really the whole markets are looking a bit rough right now, and so we want to uh, be cautious going forward and uh, making sure we're picking our, our stocks and our sectors really intelligently. And uh, right now, unfortunately, there's no obvious sectors to really focus on at the moment. So when we jump over at the broader indexes, look at the Russell 3000. Uh, we are below our 50-week moving average uh, pretty significantly after this week. And uh, we've been talking about this channel for some time. This goes all the way back into the 2009 financial crisis bottom. And it's been a very solid trading channel to kind of uh, look at for the broader markets. Um, looking at the Russell 3000 here. And uh, anytime we get up to this tougher bound of the range, we typically see at a minimum a pullback to that center channel in the L line. Uh, that would represent about another 7 or 8% sell off from there. Uh, but anytime we really see some, some stress in the markets, we could easily get back down to this bottom channel, which would represent another 20-25% uh, to the downside potentially uh, for the broader markets uh, if we see that develop. When we jump over to the Russell 1000, the large caps, we saw uh, it almost get above our 50-week moving average at the beginning of this week, but then a sharp reversal and sold off quite a bit. Uh, some of that has to do with some of the uh, selling pressure we saw in bigger companies like NASDAQ uh, or like Netflix. And then we also saw uh, some selling pressure just in the last couple of days out of Google. And so we're seeing some of the more popular, uh, bigger market cap names really start to see some uh, selling pressure as well. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, we are coming up against uh, some potential Fibonacci support at the 231 level. Uh, but it's looking like, at least for now, that uh, large caps are getting beat up pretty badly as well. And when we jump over to the Russell 2000, small caps, um, same, similar story here. We've really seen selling pressure in the small caps for about a month now. And we are coming down to some key levels where it's tended to reverse and bounce back to the upside. So we'll want to watch that next week and see if we can find some support and put a reversal in. Um, but if we see it sell off any further from this level and continue to the downside, I think that'd be a 
a strong signal in the markets to uh, potentially get even more defensive uh, and potentially further pain in the markets coming in the future. So when we jump over at the uh, ticker VEU, it's the All World XUS ETF. This represents uh, the broader stock markets across the globe minus the United States. Gives us a good indication as to what things are looking out, looking like outside of the United States, and uh, not a lot of uh, optimism there either. We've seen some selling pressure really for the last three weeks uh, out of that chart, and so uh, not looking like there's a lot of great opportunity outside of the United States either. And when we look at it on relative terms, uh, emerging markets uh, divided by the S&P 500, a uh, similar story there where we did see a bit of a pullback on relative terms, but I think that just was more to the uh, more had to do with the fact that the S&P sold off pretty aggressively the last couple of days, maybe a little harder than some of the uh, emerging markets did, but uh, still looking like those are to the downside as well. And then when we take a look at our growth versus value chart, uh, since last November, it's really been value's been the place to be, um, but really over these last uh, couple of weeks, um, value has had some been under pressure as well, and so it's really not a matter of this value outperforming growth, uh, it's just losing less than uh, the growth space is right now, but they're both uh, definitely under pressure at the moment. We jump over to the U.S. oil chart. We've been watching this one, and there's been a lot of uh, a lot of excitement and upside momentum in that ever since we broke above about the $90, $90 a barrel level, got all the way up to uh, almost $130 a barrel, and now we've been kind of chopping around in a tight uh, bull pennant or bull flag uh, that we're looking for some resolution on. And so I think right now, based on the market conditions, uh, I'm not looking to get too aggressive in the energy trades right now. I'd really like to see some sort of resolution out of this. Uh, before we either get bullish or bearish uh, on the sector. But if we see a break above this uh, bull pennant line uh, to the upside, then that would definitely be a bullish development for the energy sector going forward. Uh, probably be a good signal on the resumption of the energy trades. Uh, but for right now, probably best to keep an eye on this and just uh, see how it develops. And then when we take a look at the commodity CRB index, talked about how last week how we were coming up against some key resistance level at 313.75. Uh, we got just above it to start the week, but then uh, sold off pretty quickly and are, and are seeing commodities uh, roll over a bit as well. So um, we don't want to get too long on any commodity trade opportunities unless we see a break above that 313.75 level. Uh, or if we see a, enough of a sell-off in the commodities where it looks like there might be a good uh, opportunity to buy the dip. But for now, uh, kind of a wait-and-see approach on commodities as well. When we take a look at the high-yield corporate bond ETF, uh, we've been watching this one for some uh, market signals as to the, the health of the broader markets. We've talked about if we got below the 79.50 level, that would be a, a bearish signal for the markets, and we did drop below that this week. So we'll want to keep an eye on that next week and see if we can uh, reverse back up to the upside. If we don't and we continue to sell off on the HYG, I think that's uh, another uh, important signal that uh, markets are looking uh, a bit rough at the moment. And then when we look at it on relative terms, the corporate bonds uh, compared to uh, traditional bonds, treasury bonds, uh, where we've been watching this ratio chart at 0.66 really closely. Uh, we've been kind of stuck tight in a range 0.66 to 0.68 on this chart and uh, if we break down below that 0.66 level I think that would even be a stronger signal that there's some more market pain coming and so we'll be watching that one closely in the coming weeks. And then when we take a look at um, consumer discretionary versus consumer staples uh, we're seeing um, more uh, defensive posturing in regards to this chart as well although we are up at a key uh, support level on this ratio chart at 0.74 so it's possible we could see a bit of a bounce next week uh, but we'll want to keep an eye on that if we see it drop uh, consistently below that level I think that would just be uh, another bear signal uh, for the markets and when we take a look at the gold and silver space starting out with gold uh, we are talking about if we got above the 186 level, that was when we'd be getting back into the gold trade. We got just up to that level and then it had a huge reversal uh, from 186 down to 180 this week. So uh, gold and silver can be really frustrating to try to trade. Uh, it can get really close to that technical trade level and then it just reverses down. And that happens, seems to happen quite a bit with both gold and silver. So uh, same story here with gold. If we're below 186, I'm not really interested in trading it. If we see a break above that 186 level, then I'll get a little more excited on a possible breakout in the gold space. And uh, silver was a similar story. We were watching 2425 as our key level there. Uh, got just up to that top, uh, 2420, and sold off pretty aggressively. Finished the week at about 2230 on silver. So I'm uh, not really interested in silver either until we can see that break above the 2425 level. 
And then taking a look at the dollar index, uh, we did get above a key uh, resistance level at the 150 uh, spot that we were watching closely. Got above that this week pretty convincingly. Now we're settling the week out at about 101 on the day wide. So the next level we'll be watching to the upside is uh, 103.85 on the DXY. And when we take a look at the interest rates, see what those have been doing. Obviously the two year has been just ripping uh, higher and higher. Uh, no exception this week, although we did see a bit of a pullback towards the end of the week on that. And we got all the way almost as high as 2.8, finished the week at about 2.6. Uh, a lot of speculation about possibly seeing a little bit of a rollover in interest rates just because the rate of change has been so uh, fast and really at historic levels. Um, so there are people looking for possible uh, bond trade setups, but I haven't seen anything develop uh, for that yet. So I am keeping my eye on that, but for now we're still seeing uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, upside momentum in the interest rates across across the spread. So we take a look at the 10-year, same deal. Uh, we've got above actually a key 40-year uh, resistance level uh, on this line here. So as long as we're above that, I think the bias is to the upside still on the 10-year. Uh, we got almost a three, really get to right at 3% and then pull back a little bit. So we'll keep an eye on that next week. If we do see a breakdown on the 10-year, and if we see it get, say, below 2.8%, 2, 2 um, then maybe we see a reversal there in the short term, and that could be a possible bond trade setup, but we want to see that develop first uh, because we have been seeing some historic moves out of the rates, and um, it's best not to bet against those until we see a, a clear rollover. And when we take a look at the 30-year, 30-year uh, had probably the least movement this, this, um, this week. Uh, we did see a pretty good move out of it, but we ended up s settling in uh, pretty pretty much in the middle of the range at about 2.95% on the 30 year. And then we jump over to the yield curve that we've been watching and talking about. We did get below the zero line a few weeks ago, but had really two strong weeks to the upside. But then this week we had a bit of a, a pullback off of that 0.38% uh, ratio level that we were watching as possible resistance and it did uh, turn back over off of that. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. If we can see it get back above the 0.38, that obviously would be pretty bullish signal for potentially financials but it's not looking like we're going to get that at the moment so as long as we're below the 0.38 percent level i think the bias is to the downside and, and wouldn't shock me if we potentially reinvert it on the yield curve so we'll keep an eye on that going forward and then a huge spike on the vix this week um, last week we did bottom out close to the 20 uh, level on the vix uh, but then last week saw a decent move up to about 22 uh, this week we started out the week at about 22 and it finished almost uh, close to 30 at about 28, 20 on the VIX. And so uh, elevated VIX means elevated uh, momentum and, and uh, price movements in the market and a lot more fear uh, in the markets developing. So it's uh, important to keep an eye out on that. And uh, jumping over to the put call ratio, um, we got above a really extended level on this one at the 1.25% range. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, uh, and so anytime we get above that, that's definitely you know, more of an extreme level. Uh, we really have only had that happen about four or five times over the last uh, year or so. And so people are really buying a lot of protection in the markets right now, so there's a lot of fear around some potential sell-offs, and so people are getting very defensive uh, with their uh, buying a lot of puts in the market. And then an interesting chart we'll wrap it up with was uh, something I just kind of started recently looking at that uh, is an interesting um, relationship chart that I've been looking at the consumer staples uh, divided by the S&P 500 and then also overlaying that comparing it with the S&P 500 price action movement. So the S&P 500 movement is the line in orange and then the candlesticks below is the consumer staples in relative terms to the S&P 500. And an interesting thing we saw here is that every time we get above uh, some key uh, moving averages, that tends to be a nice signal for uh, a market sell-off. So we can see how in early January, the consumer staples in relative terms got above the 50-week uh, moving average, and that was actually almost to the T, the start of the sell-off uh, from the peak of the S&P 500. And we were down about 11% now on the S&P 500 so far. Um, we're all, another interesting development on this relationship chart is we're, we're also now uh, while well, it looks like it kind of called out the potential beginning of a correction, we're also now getting above all the moving averages, the 200-week moving average uh, being the last one. It's just now crossing, and any time we typically get above all the moving averages, that tends to uh, indicate maybe even a more aggressive correction coming. And so 
interesting chart that we're going to keep an eye on and see how that uh, how that looks going forward. But we went back historically and looked at things. Obviously, the COVID crash, there was a, a pretty strong uh, indication with that getting above those levels, um, pretty close to the drop off on that. And then if we go back even further, we can see uh, almost every time we've seen a, a pretty decent correction, uh, there's been this uh, relationship uh, correlation in this XLP divided by SPY. So interesting uh, relationship charts, you know, no one chart will give you uh, definitive answers as to like one chart gave you a signal that there's definitely a correction in the works or that there's not. But uh, when you have a bunch of really good signal charts like this and you can get a bunch of them that all tend to line up with the same um, assessment, then that oftentimes gives you, a, gives you a much stronger conviction as to what's happening in the market. So, Certainly this week, it's, there's not a lot to get super excited about and think that there's a lot of great opportunities out there. Um, so make sure to download the Toro Alerts app on your app store. Uh, in these volatile markets, it's never been more important than to have uh, some trading tools to help you out uh, navigate these markets. And you can make, utilize the promo code so you can get one free month. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.